We'll now examine the components of an ATX form factor motherboard. This particular motherboard is in fact a micro ATX form factor. It's 24.4 by 21.2 centimeters in size. Let's start first of all by looking at the power on the motherboard, the power connectors. At the bottom here we have a 20 piece ATX connector and that provides power to most of the motherboard devices including any cards that will be plugged into the AGP or any of these three PCI slots here. In this top right corner just here we have the ATX 12V connector. That connector provides an extra 12 volts for the Pentium 4. Just down here you can see just to the top right of these two orange slots we have a connector for the CPU fan and over here just to the left of this PCI slot we have another connector for providing power to a system fan which will be mounted at the back of the system case. In the bottom left hand corner here we have a lithium battery which provides power to the CMOS RAM. Now let's move on to the chips. This is the socket for the CPU chip. It's an LGA775 socket. Next to that we have under the heatsink the Northbridge chipset. Under here is an Intel 865G chip. And here we have another part of the chipset. This is the Southbridge chipset. Also refers to as uh, the IO controller hub and that's uh, an ICH5, an Intel ICH5 Southbridge chipset. Top left, up here, above the PCI slots, with the small label on the top, that's our BIOS chip. A couple of other chips near this, that small chip just to the top left of the BIOS is the sound chip, and to the right of the BIOS chip, that's the uh, LAN controller chip. These two orange slots are DIMM slots for our system RAM cards, our system RAM memory modules. Below those, we have two 40-pin connectors. These are the IDE connectors. We have a primary and a secondary IDE connector and each of those connectors supports two devices on a single cable. Examples of IDE devices are hard drives and optical drives. To the left of this PCI slot is the 34-pin floppy disk drive connector. That can also support two devices, two floppy drives. Near the CMOS battery down here we have two SATA connectors for SATA hard drives or optical drives. Unlike IDE connectors, each of these connectors will only support one device each on a single cable. These yellow devices here on the left edge of the motherboard are headers, they're USB headers. We can connect a cable to these headers which run to a pair of USB ports on the front panel of the system case. So that will allow us to connect USB devices directly to the front of the case, which is often a lot more convenient than reaching around to the back of the system case to plug in the USB devices. We also have, just here, an audio header. We can remove these two jumpers, which will effectively cut off the sound ports here, and instead we can connect a cable, again, to the front of the system case, so we can plug in microphone, speakers, headsets directly to the front of the system rather than uh, reach around to the rear. Right next to the CMOS battery, just to its left here, we have the connectors for the front panel buttons and LEDs. So to here, we'll connect the on-off switch, the reset switch, the LED indicators for power and hard disk drive activity. There's a couple of other little jumpers down here. If we ever forget our CMOS password, we can connect a jumper to these two pins. It says clear CMOS quite near to it. And when we power the system up, that will then clear the CMOS information, including the password. This tiny jumper here, it says CI, is a chassis intrusion jumper. Some uh, system units do provide that facility you can connect uh, a cable to that small jumper just below those SATA connectors and if somebody opens the lid then the next time you boot the system up you'll be told, you'll be warned that somebody has intruded into the chassis, somebody has opened up your system and may have changed it.